Okay. <laughs>
body position key, route reading key, mistakes will be punished. Yeah, they said quite a bit of compression, um, slopers mainly. Um, it'll be interesting to see the different climbers climb on the route um, with the different styles. I'm wondering how many different versions of this climb we will see tonight. Yeah, we've got quite a, a, a series of contrasting styles between we the different do. climbers. Uh, those two there will put on quite the show you'd expect. Interesting as, as ever to see again who interacts with who, I guess somewhat inevitably two of the Japanese climbers chatting to each other, although interestingly the Narisaki brothers not sticking together. But seemingly uh, everyone else kind of doing their own thing. I think it will be interesting to see, um, since we have a range of very experienced World Cup competitors and then also some young youngins, um, it will be interesting to see the contrast between how they do on this route, knowing that this route is so strongly based on how it's read and how it's interpreted. And you made an interesting point when we were down the front of the wall earlier on. You're saying that the the average age of the climbers is quite young. We've got it four is. climbers under uh, 20 or younger tonight. Yeah, unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if there's anything in that, but it certainly makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, you can see there as well on the the men's route. We just caused a glimpse of it right at the bottom. Really unusual start. Uh, it's a symmetrical. Two sets of symmetrical volumes. Uh, the climbers are going to have to presumably mantle up in between. It's interesting. It seems like they've been liking the mantles for the start of the routes here. Um, in the, the women's semifinal, we also had a mantle, which was slightly nerve-wracking. And every, almost everyone looked like they felt slightly uncomfortable on it. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to watching the men on this and see how they tackle it. And you climbed earlier in the semifinals. Despite the heat we get here in Xiamen, it seems like the wall stays in pretty good condition. It did stay relatively cool. Um, we had a little bit of a breeze, I think, coming off of the ocean. Um, it's nice being in this location versus some of the other places that we've competed in China where you feel like there's it's very stagnant in the air. Here there's a little bit of movement, and I think that's really helpful. Yeah, we are literally 50 meters from the sea. If it was a clear day from our commentary position, we'd be able to see uh, the white sandy beach. Here we can have a good look uh, close up at the route. Uh, pretty quick look through it from our Chinese director. If anyone climbs it at that speed, I will be impressed. Uh, and that's where they're heading up to the top. We're trying to get hold of a route map. Inevitably, because uh, we had the semi-finals earlier on today, the route setters uh, are working until quite close up to the start of the final on the route map. They're making minute changes and uh, making tiny decisions. So the route map is only finalized at the last second. So we don't yet have a copy of it. We will try and get hold of one. Uh, so that we can have a, a guesstimate at scores as the climbers go. It's interesting to see because I always wonder when when the routes are heavily based in one color. Um, I always find it harder to memorize the route when I go back into ISO. And so I wonder if that is part of the tactic of the route setters. I'd be interested to ask them um, if that kind of increases the complexity of the route or not. Um, because I feel like if there's more variety in the colors, you can remember the holds when you go back in ISO and you can kind of visualize it in your head. But when all the holds are similar in color, it makes that a little bit more challenging. It's a really interesting point, actually, because it's, it's been a theme the whole weekend here in Xiamen that there hasn't been a lot of variety in color. The roots have been the same color pretty much top, uh, bottom to top. Two minutes left of observation. As you can see, six minutes for the climbers as ever, and they get to 40 seconds individual observation time as well when they first come out to climb. That man there could almost certainly claim the uh, overall title for the season if he were to win here tonight. He couldn't, wouldn't quite be done mathematically for Adam Ondra, but he's not competing next week in Inzai, so uh, all he can do is try to win here and then... Uh, as I say, he'll almost certainly be crowned season champion if he does win tonight. If he doesn't win, it makes it a little more open. Kai Harada, and believe it or not, considering it's his first season really consistently making finals, Alberto Hines Lopez is still in with a shout of claiming the title. It, things would have to go exceptionally well for him for that to be the case. So. Yeah, but I feel like you never know. Well, With competitions like this, so it's possible. What did you know about Chen Su before this year? Um, I mean... 
not a lot. And here she is. She yeah, can win yeah. it tonight. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because I had first I first met her climbing outdoors actually in Rifle, Colorado, um, last summer, and um, she climbed a route called Bad Girls Club, a really beautiful 9A in the Wicked Cave. And I remember meeting her and her family there, um, and then seeing her this year on the World Cup circuit. And you just see what an amazing climber she is, both on rock and in competitions on plastic. Yeah, she's been something of a sensation. The closest we've had, I guess, on the men's side has probably been Alberto. Kind of, He'd been on the fringes. We'd seen him in some semis, been, been really consistently making finals, and he puts on a great show when he gets there. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure yeah, it's anyone crazy. quite saw her beating Yanya in three out of four competitions so far this year. Yeah, a lot of strong women out there, yeah. It's crazy too to see also with Alberto and just looking at the ages, you you look at a piece of paper and you see all of these people with birthdays in the 2000s. It's, it's crazy. It's really quite amazing, yeah. It's um, climbers, uh, yeah, as I say, we've got four climbers out of eight here, They're 20 or younger. So it is a, a relatively young final. That's how they'll line up as ever, coming in reverse order from the uh, semi final result had big ties in pretty much every round so far, but they eventually got close to sorted out and we ended up with eight men through and, and ended up with nine women in their final. It would be Tomoa Narasaki out first and Sean Bailey, Taise Homer, Meichi Narasaki, Jesse Grupper, uh, Alberto Hines Lopez, Adam Ondra and Kai Harada. So four Japanese climbers, two Americans, a Czech and a Spaniard make up the final eight. As I say, we've had ties quite a lot of the way through. We've got a, a couple that we could do with sorting out here in the final, uh, Sean Bailey and Taise Homer are currently tied all the way through the competition on all three routes, the two in the qualifiers and the semi-final. Alberto Hines Lopez, Jesse Grupper and Adam Ondra are all tied as well. So just so you know, if they are tied, if those people that are already tied are then tied in the final, if it's for a place on the podium, it will come down to time on the route. So when those climbers are climbing, we will keep a particularly close eye on the clock doesn't happen too often but it has happened um, exactly yeah even at a world championships yes it has uh, if it's for a place not on the podium then they they are they can, they can tie you can have a joint fourth joint fifth whatever but you can't have a tie on the podium so if it is for a place on the podium and climbers are tied it will come down to time as uh, as you say it doesn't happen that often but we have got those three tied in second place alberto jesse and adam and then sean and tese uh, also tied in joint sixth right now so there's the possibility it could happen. And that's where they're headed, the top, and you can see in the background, part of the uh, hotel complex. We mentioned it earlier on. Absolutely amazing venue. There is talk that it's going to host us and not just the competition next year. They would certainly get my vote. <laughs> it is palatial. Uh, that's the scene. Men will be on the left and then... Uh, uh, at the completion of the men's final, we then have the women, and that's how the women will line up. As I say... Uh, ties over on the women's side and we've ended up bringing nine climbers through into the final. Lutz Karakovic, Ai Mori, Natsuki Tani, Evgenia Kazbakova, Jane Kim, Akio Noguchi, Yutong Jiang, uh, Cheonsa and Yanya Gamra. So three Japanese in the uh, women's side and four on the men's side. So a good day for Team Japan, one of many in the past few years. Yeah, it seems commonplace nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it does really, <laughs> doesn't it? And uh, Akio Noguchi just continues to do what she does. She does. Uh, I got sent some really good stats, actually, by uh, a friend of mine, and he was uh, talking about how many, uh, what the number of years that climbers have scored a World Cup ranking point, and Akio Noguchi uh, has scored a World Cup ranking point in 15 different seasons. That's unreal. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. You it's know? incredible, yeah, she, and, and doesn't show any sign of, um, of dropping off. So No, I don't think she's slowing down. She's not slowing down one bit. I was, uh, I was going to say enjoy her while she's still around, but to be honest, she'll probably be around long after we're all done with the IFSC. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I remember she, watching she her when I was just a kid, just starting climbing. Yeah. You know, she was one of the names that I knew, and now being here and seeing her, and she's still, you know, one of the climbers on top. It's, it's amazing. When you're warming up, uh, do you find yourself kind of watching people like Akio trying to pick stuff up in isolation or do you just try and keep, you, keep your head in what you're doing? Um, it's pretty interesting because I was actually talking to some other athletes about this um, in isolation two days ago 
and we were talking about how sometimes you see someone warming up doing something and then you start asking yourself, you're like, wait, should I be doing that? <laughs> you know, and then you realize you've been competing for over a decade and you're like, okay, I guess I probably know what I'm doing in warm ups, but at the same time, you know, you see the other climbers, especially those who inspire you and you're like, oh, maybe that's a good idea. Should I be trying that? <laughs> <laughs> There's always more to learn though, so it's good to pick things up, I guess. Yeah, you could sound would imagine we could all pick something up from Akio Noguchi's longevity. Yeah, I think so. Just got a glimpse of the crowd there. It's actually uh, reasonably full of venue. It's often the case in China when we come here, you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes we get a big attendance, sometimes we don't get many people at all. We've got a bigger crowd than we've had in previous years in um, Xiamen. This year, earlier on in Wujiang, it was particularly well attended. Chongqing yeah. was well attended. So it's good to see the, the Chinese public really getting on side. Yeah. We have a decent sized crowd and it's an empty hotel. Imagine next year when it's oh. full. <laughs> uh, and last night we had a big crowd for the speed as well. Uh, that was pretty yeah. spectacular. Yeah, new speed record broken. Yes, uh, go back and watch that. You, you won't need long to watch the bit no. I'm talking about. You need just under seven seconds. Uh, but go back and watch the big final over on the women's side. Uh, history was made here in Xiamen, and it was pretty extraordinary to watch. We've been told that the climbers will be coming out at uh, 7.15 local time. It's in about two minutes' time. As I say, that is how they'll uh, come out. Tomo and Narasaki will be out first. It's actually uh, That ranking is the, uh, the pre-rank, so it, it'll effectively be the reverse of that. It'll be Tomo and Narasaki who's out first, then Sean Bailey, Tese Homa, Meichi Narasaki, Jesse Grupper, he, Alberto Hines Lopez, Adam Ondra, and Kai Harada. Eight men through to the final, despite... Uh, potentially, when at one stage it looked like we might end up with an awful lot more, but we ended up with the uh, the regulation eight. Yeah, it was a little bit surprising after all of the ties in the semi-final round. So. Yeah, it looked like we could end up with a 16-person <laughs> final. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, uh, some people won't have seen the semi-final, I know, but seeing as you uh, did the route and you you fell on the move, yes. where seemed everyone fell. Yeah, it did. Uh, um, <laughs> any insight into, did you get the move right, body um, position right? Because we were trying to figure it out in the commentary box and it wasn't immediately obvious. It was interesting. <laughs> it was As interesting. our light collapses, <laughs> sorry for the bang. <laughs> no worries. Um, it was interesting to see because it seemed that a lot of people went more for um, the sloper rather than the jib where the tick mark was and I don't know if it was due to a lot of girls not seeing the tick mark or whether it was due to wanting to stay more in control and go to the lower part of the hold but well, it looks like Tomoa's up so <laughs> we'll <laughs> jump in. <laughs> we'll jump in yeah Tomoa uh, remember he's allowed 40 seconds individual observation he took like, more like four then to be honest looks like he just wanted to get on with it walked straight out straight on the wall uh, and this is a slightly funky start we mentioned earlier the symmetrical pairs of volumes uh, quite sensibly getting a spot from below actually it looks it's almost yeah. kind of tenuous friction based position so you just at a slight risk until you're a couple of quick draws I think, up. I think that his rapid style could actually be very beneficial on on a route like this. Yeah, I really think you're right yeah because from what the route setters tell us it's not a lot of opportunity to rest. No I think just efficiency will moving. be key here yeah. It's always impressive to watch Tomoa climb. He looks so comfortable, no matter what hold it is. Yeah, he had a strange one in the semi-final. He, he didn't look especially tired and then just kind of popped off. It was a bit, yeah. bit of a strange uh, I'm, moment. I'm a little unsure what happened there, but sometimes that's how it goes with climbing. Yeah, it just made it through in the end. Second lead final of the year for Tomoa Narasaki. What a world championship he had earlier on this year as well. Picked up a second Boulder World Championship as you see him with a tough cross through move. Wow. Oh my goodness. Relying on all his Boulder in power there. Yeah, two time Boulder World Champion. He won the combined as well. All the power seems to be working out for him. <laughs> oh, needed every bit of it for that. You can see how quickly he's climbing. He's been off the ground in 90 seconds. He's been Unreal. One of those climbers that shows no sign of fatigue. <laughs> That's the second time his feet have cut loose. This hold here, that we, he just had his right hand. He's about to bring his left hand to, we think, is about the last place you can take something resembling a rest. After that, there really is very little opportunity to stop from pretty much where Tomoa is. Now then, there's a little hand swap on this hold, which the climbers may not have read. He could really do with um, 
That's it. Yeah, bumping up with the right hand. You can actually use, put the left hand where his right hand was and then go up from there. As it was, he just turns to bump straight up. Going really well here, Tomo yeah. Nawasaki. It doesn't seem Looking out, confident. Yeah, it doesn't seem out of the question that we could see a very early top here. 3.45 left on the clock. Tomo has absolutely flown up this route. If it comes down to time, I don't think he's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> no. I wonder if that's something that he suspected, reading the route. Doesn't seem out of the question, because in less than three minutes, wow. Tomo Narasaki has topped the route. He's been off the ground. Two minutes and 40 seconds, and he is lowering back down. First climber out, and he topped the route Impressive. without really pausing for breath. Was that an exceptional performance from Tomo Narasaki, or do we have a route that is going to be a little bit too easy for climbers of this caliber? We will soon find out. Tomo will obviously move into first place. One thing to be aware of, he came into the final in eighth place, and he's not tied with anyone. So if somebody uh, tops the route, regardless of time, they could actually go, they'll move ahead of You're him right. on count back. Uh, so he could, believe it or not, end up eighth. It's, it's possible. It's, it's, always, it's always hard to know in a final because the climbers that have qualified for the final, you know, they're all at such a high level that really the first person who comes out could be the only person to top the route. Well, we had this earlier on this year uh, with Hidemasa Nishida uh, in Brianson. He topped yep. the route. He was first out. He'd never won a World Cup, never won a World Cup medal. So you can't help but think maybe the route's a bit undercooked. Yeah. And as it turned out, it was the best performance we saw all night, and he won the competition. So um, we shouldn't read just yet too much no. into an early top, especially when it's Tomoa who claims it, the uh, two-time season champion in Boulder, two-time world champion and combined champion. He's uh, certainly got calibre. I feel like those unknowns are what make our sport so exciting. I agree, I agree. Never know what to expect. Keeps you on your toes. <laughs> uh, Sean Bailey out next. He's never won a lead World Cup medal, Sean Bailey. He hasn't. I think I think that will um, will come in the future, though. Uh, it was good talking to him earlier. He said he felt good in semifinals and felt like he was kind of getting his groove back. So. Yeah, it seems one of those statistics that just doesn't seem right that he hasn't won one. Uh, but he, he hasn't. As I say, picked up one in the boulder. He's underway now here in Xiamen. Uh, also climbing pretty quickly. Really quickly. The route set has said the route, the route climbs quickly. Uh, you know all routes climb quickly when it's to mower on them. Uh, but with, but with Sean, Sean Bailey. style, yeah. Yeah, Sean Bailey's also going pretty quickly. Wow, it looks like a lot of purchase on the heels. Sean uh, lives and trains in, in um, San Diego, California. Yeah, he said he tries to get on rock, you know, as often as he can, but he's mostly been climbing, training for competitions this year. Yeah, second final of the year so far for Sean Bailey. Speaking of Brianson, he made the final air, ended up sixth. He had a, a little hand slip, it looked like earlier. The right hand just popped off, but otherwise he's looked pretty steady. You can see it's just not really much opportunity to stop as we've reached yeah, this I would say this looks like one of the moves on the route. Crossing over to this banana looking hold. Feet cut loose, manages to uh, restrict the swing to about oh. as small as it could have been. Holding the core tension there. It is interesting. I was really impressed by the number of heel hooks required on all three routes that I climbed on this weekend. And seeing um, the final routes, it looks like there are quite a few of those present there as well. So, Sean Bailey couldn't find one there, though. He, he slipped. That was actually the same move where Samoa's feet came off, yeah. except Sean didn't quite hold it. Sean didn't quite hold it. So obviously, uh, second climber out there will move him into second. Six yes. climbers still to go. Uh, Sean definitely, having only been on the wall two minutes, looked like he, he definitely had something left physically. He definitely looked like he had some juice left, yeah. But he only, that, that swing looked absolutely brutal. It had to happen to him the same way as it happened to Tomoa. Uh, the difference was Tomoa just managed to hold it. 
uh, Tomoa just talking to Yuka Kobayashi, of course, former uh, IFSC World Cup climber turned Japanese coach. Let's have a look at Sean a bit lower down. There was a hand pop. I wonder if we're about to see it. His right hand just slipped off uh, a bit lower down. I'm sure he's going to be slightly disappointed with that, um, especially if he didn't feel like he really could give it his all. You know, sometimes you come off the wall fighting and sometimes you come off the wall not knowing quite what happened. So hopefully he felt like he could have, he, he, he gave it close to what he had in the tank, but it looks like maybe he had some left. Tose Hummer, next uh, climber out. Three Ouch. lead finals last year Head in 2018. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, made three lead finals last year. Uh, another climber that's never won a World Cup medal. And uh, Tese is uh, one of the climbers that was tied, actually. Uh, he was tied with uh, Sean Bailey. So it's all ifs and buts, but if it was for a podium place and they tied in the final, it would come down to time. This could go down as one of the fastest men's finals of all time. They it may. <laughs> just I would not be surprised at this point. Absolutely racing up it. Again, heel hooks uh, featuring heavily. One and a half minutes elapsed for Tose Homer. First climb is to, to take a rest. Taking, yeah, he's actually shaking out. Seems like almost the first time we've seen that on this route thus far. Couple more moves uh, before things get really, really serious. It's kind of the next three or four volumes after this that have, uh, seem to this have caused the first couple of brutal. climbers problems. Oh. Smooth. It looks like going to that with the right hand is probably easier than the cross that Tomoa did. Tese Homer managing to, to get some pretty decent rests, it would seem here. Feet cut loose, held the swing with ease. on the crimp. He yeah, just looks solid all round. Swapping heels left and right. <laughs> He's so calm. He's rested much more than anyone else. Uh, Tomoa was on his way back down at this stage. But Tose Homer is absolutely fine. He's uh, you know, definitely, we won't need to worry about time because the person he was tied with, Sean Bailey, fell lower than this. So, And like Charlie said, if if he ties with Tomoa, he still will take the lead due to count backs to semifinals. Taito Homo just looking absolutely smooth and in control here. Wow. Suddenly the feet cut loose, just as I say that. But he's still going. He's not got many more moves to the top now. You can see the top hole beckoning that huge triangular volume. Starting to fight. Feet cut loose again. Here's the final move. Oh, oh wow. manages to hold on to it. Doesn't count till he's clipped the top quick draw, which he has now. That's the top for Tesa. He'll move into first place ahead of Tomoa Narasaki. Three climbers out so far, and two of them have topped. Five still to go. Well, we will be keeping a very close eye on the clock here because, as I say, Alberto Hines Lopez, Jesse Grupper, and Adam Ondra tied all the way through the competition. Might be about time, so I say, Homer. Uh, second climber to top the route. Him and Tomoa both found the top, and he moves ahead of Tomoa. On count back to the previous round, Meichi Narasaki is out next. Second of the Narasaki brothers. And the younger of the two. <laughs> yeah, no. By three years, I believe. Yeah. It's always cool to see them competing side by side. 
They seem really supportive of each other. Yeah, Toso Homa, I mean, Tomoa's got his... You'd never expect Tomoa to hang around, but Toso Homa looked the smoothest. Uh, albeit I have to agree. A couple of, couple of cut looses. Cut looses, is that a word? Cuts, you can make it a word. <laughs> cut, cuts loose. Cuts the cut loose is uh, a bit higher up on the route, but overall pretty smooth. Meiji Narasaki now. Another man that's never won a lead World Cup medal, despite his uh, vast successes. Did the double last year in Moscow in the uh, 2018 Youth World Championships. Picked up a boulder medal in Vail also in 2018. Could today be the day. It'll be interesting to watch him climb this route as I think he is one of the taller competitors here. Um, seems like there's a lot of tension, um, moves that rely on tension, and I know sometimes when you're taller that can be slightly more difficult, but with his strength and his technique, I think he'll be able to make it work. Yeah, not not climbing at quite the same uh, speed as his brother, but Meichi, one of the climbers who isn't tied with anyone, so uh, no matter what happens, his attempt won't come down to time. Unless he takes more than six minutes, which seems That's true. <laughs> highly unlikely. I think it would be hard to take more than six minutes on this wall. <laughs> I'd be impressed if anyone could take six minutes. That'd be some good endurance. Be interesting to see whether he does the cross, and he does. I agree, it looks a more powerful super, way of doing it. Super smooth, though. Yes. Yeah, he looks comfortable. I think we might be seeing a couple more tops on this route, but. There's no way to say for sure. I fear we could be, yeah. It's, um, I, I think, what's slightly ominous. It's just a, a tough move coming up now, though. Uh, the what, sorry, next one. Doesn't look too stressed by it. What looks slightly ominous is the fact that it didn't look like Teisei Homer or Tomoa or Meiji have really been at their limit. No. So, um, And we lose Meiji in uh, one of the worst cases of uh, commentator's curse I've had for a while. I also did the same with Roman de Grange in the semi-final. Meiji oh. Narasaki, just as I said, uh, it didn't look like he was struggling. It slipped. No, we, we, have seen, we have seen a few of those uh, as well during the semi-final. For the men and the women, actually. So Meiji uh, will move into third place as it stands. Uh, if it's to end now, it would be an all Japanese podium. Would not be unheard of. No, stranger things have happened. <laughs> so where did we lose him? He's, he looked uh, composed, controlled at this stage. to me like it was a hand that went could be wrong no it was a right foot just trying to readjust the feet didn't quite manage it we talked earlier on about the fact that body position uh, could well be key it seemed that might have been the case over Meiji Narasaki tried to move his right foot and replace it with his left it just dislodged the right foot just times I think on those bigger feet you're actually paying so much less attention to what your feet are doing and so Due to that, sometimes you can make errors like that and just be off the wall before you know it. Jesse Grupper will be uh, out next. Uh, did you see him this afternoon? I mean, I, yes, I, saw um, him, I saw him almost dance out of the venue earlier after the semi final. Jesse is one of those people who is always smiling, so you can only imagine uh, what he looked like when he knew that he made the final. Um, <laughs> Yeah, first final for Jesse. Um, not the first final for Sean, but I think it might be the first final where we've had two two men qualified. Um, so I'm excited to see what Jesse will do. I think, you know, I think he goes into these things and he really goes out there and he enjoys it. 
Um, and that's, I think, something to aspire to for a lot of people. And you can definitely tell that he enjoys his time on the wall and he definitely tries hard. That's how it stands uh, right now before Jesse Grupper gets on the wall. Uh, Tose Hummer and Samoa Narasaki leading the way with the top. And Tose uh, ahead of his compatriot on count back to the previous round. Meiji Narasaki uh, second to, uh, third to his brother. 26 for him. Slip just doing an executive foot swap high on the wall. And uh, Sean Bailey again feet cut loose and he uh, fell three moves below Meiji Narasaki. But yeah, Jesse Grupper out next. That's a good trivia question. Actually, when was the last time we had two American men in a in a final? I don't know if we have. It might be the first, at least in a lead final. Yeah, and crazy fastest men's final ever. We are already halfway through at this point. This is really impossible, but the route is climbing quickly and it's getting topped. What can Jesse Grupper do? Uh, tied with Alberto and Adam. So uh, he is one of the climbers where we will be keeping a close eye on the clock. He's underway. He has, uh, as I said, he kind of danced out of the venue after the semi-final. I don't think there was a happier man in Xiamen. And this slightly funky start. It looks very uncomfortable. Yeah, I, no one's really... Uh, seems to have been troubled by it but it kind of messes with the climbers heads i think yeah i think it's i think it's put there to kind of shake up the climbers and see who can stay calm through that and then once they get through it see who can kind of pull it together and ground themselves in order to keep going and start the climbing which is more difficult but maybe slightly less complex looks like he found his way through that moving into the, the sea of blue yeah, the sea of blue, exactly. It's uh, the main sea of blue is only 50 meters away. It's an uh, incredible location for a climbing competition. We had the drone up in the air earlier, and you really got a, a feel for it then. Yeah, it is beautiful here. Suddenly, Team USA down in the crowd, making a little bit of noise, getting behind Jesse. For a fifth climber out, tied with Adam Andra, tied with Alberto Hines Lopez, uh, and behind outright behind Kai Harada, who set uh, a high point in the semi final. It's interesting because Jesse uh, was mentioning how over the past several months he really hasn't had very consistent training. He's been traveling quite a bit and training in the gyms that he finds. Um, but from his climbing at this competition, uh, I don't think anyone can argue with the fact that he seems like he's in pretty good shape. <laughs> well, some climbers work best by being entirely focused, and I guess some work just sacking up and true. seeing how it goes. I think that's true. Yeah, whatever he's doing, it's uh, certainly working. Do you know if he's coming to Windsor next week? Um, I believe he is. But I am not 100%. I would have to check our our U.S. Um, running orders. This is only, as I say, it's only his sixth World Cup. He's in his first final. Yeah, he's an impressive climber. He's always been an impressive climber as a as a youth competitor as well um, in the states. Yeah, he hasn't done that many international competitions, but he seems to do pretty well in those that he does. Uh, participate in. 310 left for Jesse. Uh, so climbing the route much slower than Tomorrow. So as I say, Tomorrow is back on the ground within three minutes, but uh, it won't matter at all uh, for the results as long as he's under six minutes. It's like he's actually getting something back on this hold that I looked at and I thought, oh, want to get past that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're Jesse Grouper got the heel hook in place now and now levers himself up one more opportunity really I wouldn't say rest but certainly to pause and then you're on to the black and red volumes above here. slaps out with the right hand can wow. he hold the swing I don't think he even hit the perfect bit of that right hand but he managed to hold the swing somehow got a real fight on his hands now Rico recovered his composure 
did well to hold that climbing. swing. Yeah. Because I don't think he had that right hand as good as it could have been. No, I don't think so either. I think he stayed on with his fighting spirit. Oh. Uh, we lose him moving out right to the first of the red and black volumes. Still smiling. Still I smiling. Love that. Comes down with the uh, 2.07 uh, on the clock. How is that in comparison? It's actually the first one I've uh, recorded because he's tied with, I'm recording uh, him and the two people he's tied with. Okay. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the time for uh, Alberto and uh, Adam. Alberto Hinas Lopez uh, will be out next, then Adam Andra, then Kai Harada. Yeah, he did the cross through move, and it looked powerful, but it looked like he really got the sweet spot of that hold. This is where it looked a bit touch and go. Oh, well held. His thumb taking a lot of the load there when he kind of swung out. And this is where we lost him. Yeah, he's just short. Like rocking over that heel would have been if he had gotten his hips a little further right I think he would have been able to get onto that right hand hold sometimes those minuscule adjustments can make make or break the move yes yeah, so it was for Jesse Alberto gets underway no hesitation no a bit like Samoa and keep your observation I'm off. I think we'll be seeing him in many more lead finals in the future. Yeah, he's pretty close to becoming European champion two weeks ago. It's crazy stuff. <laughs> he had some tough competition there. He did, yeah. Um, conditions couldn't really be much more different. Uh, I wasn't in Edinburgh, but I've, we've been to the venue. We had a World Cup there around the same time a couple of years ago. Um, it's not warm, I would say. Um, I have heard. <laughs> the only World Cup where I, I wore sorrel boots all weekend. Oh, goodness. Some climbers probably wouldn't complain too much, though. No, I mean, conditions on the wall are pretty good, but conditions for spectating and... Uh, Maybe not ideal. Not ideal, no. Suboptimal. But, yeah, he went really well uh, in Edinburgh. Went well in Kranz as well, third there in Slovenia just over uh, three weeks ago. Uh, so Jesse Gruffer actually ended up, uh, he'll be in fourth place. Uh, at least uh, may end up getting bumped down by Adam Kai and Alberto. He's ahead of Sean Bailey. Uh, as I say, currently sitting in fourth place. Teisei Homo still leads away with uh, Tomoe Narasaki and Meichi Narasaki currently taking the podium spots. I believe he just did that move without matching his left hand in before crossing to that banana hold. Impressive. Really strong and at such a young age too. So climbing quickly, only two minutes elapsed. Now Beto Hines Lopez already so finds himself. Hold this swing here. Heading out right. Very strong. Oh, he's got a battle on his hands. He, um, I think he read that really well. I think he knew his feet were going to come off. I think so too. You can see by how high he was. And the angle at which his arms were bent. Yeah, I think he knew the swing was coming. Whereas it, I think it's caught a couple of climbers by surprise. Oh, slops, slaps to the top of that red volume. The route setters were wondering if the climbers would read that. They've read it perfectly. Uh, Alberto Hines Lopez. We will have to keep a close eye on the time, not to separate him from Jesse Grupper. He's already moved ahead of him, but it could potentially be crucial if he tops against this route, Adam. He could possibly be in the position to win his first World Cup, and it looks like maybe not this time, but definitely in the future. 3 uh, zero, 3 left on the clock for Alberto, so if we lost Adam at that point, and if it was for a podium place, it would be decided by time. I'd we shall see, but a good battle from Alberto Hines Lopez. You can see he never comes down from the wall having left anything up there. He gives it absolutely everything he's got. I 
like Charlie was saying, you can see on this move, it almost looks like he knew that his feet were going to cut, so he prepared for it. It's, it, I think he's the only climber I can recall who's really kind of been ready for the swing, not been caught out by it. So Adam Ondra will be out next in Xiamen. We weren't expecting to see him compete. He was going. He was always going to come to Xiamen because of the speed. Here he is in the lead. He. Um, if you haven't been following it, in order to get to the Olympic selection event in Toulouse, which is at the end of November, you have to have competed in uh, at least two World Cups in each discipline. And uh, Adam had only done one Speed World Cup and therefore had to come to Xiamen just to participate uh, in the Speed World Cup, therefore making him eligible for Toulouse. But he figured, hey, I'm there, why not have a go at the lead? Maybe win another World Cup. Maybe win <laughs> another World Cup. He's won uh, 16 already. And... Uh, and potentially win another season title. Yes. It's amazing to think. Um, At this point, he is in the lead. Yes, and, and a win here would not quite mathematically do the job because he won't be in Inzai next weekend to pick up any yep. more ranking points, but it'd be pretty pretty close. Yeah. Uh, which, considering he'll only have competed in four competitions, would be pretty impressive. To win the overall with only competing in four competitions. Is pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, in fact, excuse me, three would have only competed in uh, in three, uh, which is yeah, wow. astounding. But he'd have won them all if he wins here, which, which helps. Um, I said earlier on, Adam is yet to be beaten in a league competition this year. He's won the uh, two World Cups he's entered before Xiamen. He won the World Championship lead, and he won the European Championship lead uh, two weeks ago. Has he had any other seasons where that's been the case? I don't think he's had any unbeaten seasons. Sadly, unlike Yanya in the boulder, it won't be a clean sweep because, as I say, he's only going to have competed in half the events. But uh, still. I guess it was quality over quantity this year. Yeah. Uh, only entered three World Cups but won them all. Not too bad. 100% record. And uh, going pretty well so far uh, on this route, which has already Moving been topped twice. Quickly seems to be the style of the night. Did kind of an awkward match there. Yeah, he did it in quite a powerful way with his hands right in front of his face like yeah. that. It was interesting because knowing he's one of the taller climbers out here, I would have expected him to do it the crossing method, but he seemed to use the match, probably conserving a little bit of energy there. Now, what will he do with the swing here? Will it catch him out or will he have read it? It seems like Alberto Hina's Lopez method of going high and getting onto it so that your hand is almost level with your face. Uh, looks promising. Looks promising. Wow, keeping a low foot. So Adam, kind of different method, but also ends up high on the hold. Remember, time only matters relative to Alberto Hina's Lopez and uh, to Jesse Gruppe. It doesn't matter... Uh, for Adam against anyone else. If he tops the route and then Kai Harada tops it, Adam will be beaten on count back. But first things first, got to try and find the top. Creeping up with the right hand. Got the heel hook in place. These that interesting dual texture volumes. Good on the fingers, a little slick on the thumb. Yeah, it uh, makes the climbers think a little bit more. The black bit is very high friction, red bit is very low friction. Adam having time to shake out. Looking relaxed. He's in his natural environment, isn't he, on the lead wall? Yeah, he is. He's always climbing like he's on a mission, too. Definitely nobody has the same style as Adam. So Adam Andra lining it up for the top now. Here he goes onto Looking the... Looking comfortable. Oh, he does one more move than the other climbers. Instead of going direct for the top, one now three. he goes for the top. Needs to get the quick draw clip before it counts. Ask the crowd for a bit of encouragement. That is Adam Ondra topping the route. He'll move into first place. All he can do is watch as Kai Harada comes out. Adam Ondra showing why in four competitions so far this year he has not been beaten. He could make the perfect sweep of five competitions, five wins in the lead in 2019. But Kai Harada might have something to say about that.
You'll see Kai definitely looked confident during the semifinal round earlier today. A few highlights from Adam. I mean, there was no point really where I didn't think he was going to top the route, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. Never really took any big risks either. There were no, no cut loose from the feet. Um, didn't look especially troubled at any time, really. No, he did keep his feet on. Um. This was the only uh, surprise I got. You could see him look at the top hole, and then he did an extra move with the left. This made me a little nervous. <laughs> I'm always like, just let the yeah, last draw. <laughs> I'm glad you say that. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Just clip it. Wait, clip it. <laughs> We've seen that a bit from Adam Ondra this year, haven't we? Uh, yeah. In my ring and back he's at the been, start of the he, year. He's been having some fun with it. <laughs> Definitely a strong group of finalists. Yeah, an incredibly strong uh, group of finalists. On both the men's and the women's side. So it's all about Kai Hirada now. The maths for him is, uh, is about as simple as it gets. Kai Hirada needs a top to win here. As I said, it's hard to believe, but he's never won a World Cup. He must, he's been close on a couple of occasions. been second in a Boulder World Cup this year, second in a Lead World Cup this year. He's a world champion, but he's never actually claimed a World Cup win. And he'll need to find a top here in Shearman if he's going to change that. Uh, interesting as well that he's able to focus. First thing he does is blow the um, blow the first couple of holes clear. Not phased by the moment at all. Get a little bit of the gunk off the volumes, maybe. <laughs> Very confident. I think it's just a little trick for the root setters. Make the climbers rely on friction. Just kind of mess with them a little bit as they first leave the ground. Kai Harada doesn't look bothered at all. Makes you feel a little unsteady. Not if you're Kai. <laughs> yeah, not if you car, he's absolutely uh, firing up the first few moves. He's a really powerful climber. His climbing style is uh, relatively similar to his compatriot Tomoa, that kind of springy style. Very springy. He always looks so focused, too. That springy style does seem to be pretty common in the Japanese climbers, especially the males. So, uh, interesting enough, Kai Harada, although he comes into the final in first place, having won in inverted commas the semi-final, a top wouldn't even get him on the... Um, uh, sorry, would get him onto the... Um, anything other than the top, sorry, will not get him on the podium is what I was trying to say. He will need a top here, but as Charlie was saying, time is not important no. for him. He can top with a second left. It's a struggle to see how he's going to take four and a half minutes from here, but he can if he wants to. It's true, these men are moving so fast, it's almost like Arca Rockmaster <laughs> duel. Could have some racing on exactly. this route. Exactly, should have two next to each <laughs> other. It might work better be interesting to see if the women's route climbs in a similar style or not. Wow, Kai is looking extremely smooth. I'll be surprised if he doesn't top this route. It's looking that way, isn't it? Would be an exciting first World Cup win for him. That's a bit of a risky move going up there with the, uh, the right hand, but he executed it just fine. That's a penultimate quick draw now. Wow, so controlled. Here goes Kai Harada. Big wow. move up with the left and the feet Ooh. cut loose. He managed to hold on to the swing. It was almost a, a Yanya swing, feet out behind the hips. But he hung on to it. Three minutes 30 left, so time not a factor in any way for Kai Harada. Just got a couple more moves to execute and he could be closing in on his first ever World Cup win. One final chalk up, one final committing move up and right. Executes it perfectly. Here he goes for the top oh, and he misses it. No. Oh, and Kai Harada will be kicking oh, no. himself. 
chose not to do that extra move with the left hand that Adam Ondra did, and he missed the top hold, and that was for the win. Oh, no. And that means that Adam Ondra will win all three World Cups that he competes in in the lead in 2019. He won the World Championships, he won the European Championships, and he will also win here in Shiam yes. Kai Harada. He's never won a World Cup. You cannot get much closer than that. No, it's crazy, too, because grabbing that last hold would have been a win for him but not grabbing that last hold actually kicks him off the podium. Doesn't even pick up a medal. Oh, Kai, we, we talked about uh, Adam just before he went to the top, got the left hand set and then went. Yeah. And Kai, uh, very confident, maybe overconfident, just launched for it. Um, but he's not a tall climber and it was a long way to go from there. I have to say, I thought it was in the bag when he did this move here. Me too. Uh, and then what happened it looked almost like the right hand maybe they'll th throw that on replay again maybe not but um it looked like the right hand almost dry fired off of that hold you know sometimes you wonder if that that comes down to sometimes when you're a younger competitor maybe when you get to the top you get a little more excited and so you rush it a little bit versus being a little bit a more of a veteran and then taking your time up there but really his climbing even though he didn't stick that last move, he looked extremely comfortable, I would say. He will Almost be cursing himself. the most comfortable up there. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Tonight. But it came down to who held on to the top hold, and it was Adam Andre who held on to it for the win. He finishes ahead of Taisei Homa and Tomoa Narasaki on count back to previous rounds. Kai Harada, who had the win literally in his hands, ends up in fourth place. Japan take two of the medals, could have taken three almost. Alberto Hinas Lopez ends up fifth, Meiji Narasaki sixth, Jesse Grupa seventh, and Sean Bailey in eighth. So the uh, climbers being presented to the crowd, uh, the podium is, is Tomoe Narasaki in third place. Tetsuya Homa picks up his first lead World Cup medal in uh, second place. But really, this lead season has been, <laughs> as the choreography just gets sorted, happens every time. This lead season has been absolutely dominated by that man right there, Adam Ondra. He's been absolutely spectacular. He might reflect that perhaps he was slightly uh, lucky tonight that, that uh, Kai Harada did miss that top hold. But uh, it, what do they say? To finish first, first you must finish. Yes, and he managed to top the true. route. And he did. Uh, he got the job done. He did what he needed to do. Well, sport, uh, all sport, including climbing comes down to micro details he, he got himself sure. in a better position for the last move and he pulled it off when Kai Harada couldn't but uh, yeah interesting final I was worried we might see five or six tops as it was everyone on the podium topped and everyone not on the podium didn't top yes uh, we are hoping to hear from Adam Andra live by the way um, I should warn you we don't have a direct communication with the Chinese director who is giving us our pictures uh, so I may not get much warning of when the interview's about to start. Uh, looks like it could be fairly imminent. Uh, Eddie is in position, ready to uh, chat to Adam. Thanks to Eddie for doubling up. He's been taking photos all round, and then we drag him in to do interviews. Uh, looks from that shot like they might not be uh, too far off. All right, let's hear from Eddie, and more importantly, Adam Andra. Adam Andra. Winner in Sherman 2019. You're making a habit of it this year. Well, this is a dream season, especially for the lead. I would never tell that it would be even possible today with such a strong, strong field, which is packed to win every single comp that I attend. And obviously now you have got plenty going forward to Toulouse. You've got results in all three disciplines. Will we see you in Insai, or are you secure to go and train for Toulouse now? I'm pretty sure I go back home, train, and get as ready as possible for the Toulouse. Would be distraction, kind of nice and positive distraction, maybe, but I rather want to play it safe for Toulouse because that's what that's what actually what really counts this season. Excellent. Well, congratulations again, and see you in just over a month in Toulouse. Thanks. See you too. Uh, really interesting there from Adam Andre saying Inzo might be a nice distraction, but he's got his eyes on Toulouse. There's only one thing he wants out of this season, isn't there? 
Yeah, I think it's to qualify for your Tokyo yeah. 2020. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, that was interesting from Adam. It was uh, sometimes he can seem really, really kind of hyped up. But this time he was. He, he seems pretty okay. relaxed. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. relaxed. We've he's seen him. Uh, I've interviewed him live after some victories, and he's he's kind of bursting with excitement. That time he's a little more chilled out. And he wasn't even expecting to yeah. be climbing here a week ago. No, I think maybe the fact that he kind of decided to do it last minute, it took some of the pressure off of him, and he just went out there and kind of did what he does best. Yeah, you can see it. Top for Adam Ondra wins in the competition on count back to... Uh, Actually, it was qualifiers, not the semi-final, but wins it on countback against Teise Homa and Tomoe Narasaki. It was Kai Harada in fourth. Mm. Oof, could have won it there. And uh, Alberto Hines Lopez, Meiji Narasaki, Jesse Grupper, and Sean Bailey rounding out the top eight. Okay, I believe we may have a, a short break, actually. We're on a, a Chinese TV schedule. Yes, so before are. the uh, women's presentation and observation, we're going to take a short break. If you watch it at home, go and put the kettle on. Go and crack open a cold one. It's, uh, it's Sunday afternoon in Europe. You can crack open a cold one. We'll speak to you very shortly for uh, women's presentation and observation uh, when I'll be joined by Lana Yip. Uh, so, Margot, you are free to go. But thank you very much for your time. It's been thank uh, you for having me. very interesting having you alongside me. And we'll see you next week in Inside. Yes, I'll see you there. Hopefully thank in the you. final. Thank you. <laughs>
Welcome back to uh, Xiamen. Still a lovely warm evening here on the shore of the South China Sea. Charlie Bosco here, a substitution for Margot Hayes in the commentary box. With regular here, uh, Alana Yip joining me for the uh, women's final. The women being introduced now as we speak. Recently crowned European champion Lutska Rakovic's uh, first out. Uh, first of two Slovenians climbing in the final this evening. I Mori will be out next. She's getting the big intro, Aymari. Here she is, she of the mega endurance. She might get tired, but we've never seen it if she does. Uh, already picked up a third in Wujiang in the bouldering earlier on this year, as well as in Vila in Hachioji. So three World Cup medals across two disciplines already in 2019. I think it's her breakout season too, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Natsuki Tani, the next climber out. Uh, the second of four Japanese climbers uh, climbing this evening. Excuse me, three, three Japanese climbers. There were four men, three there were women. four men, three women. You're yeah. absolutely right. Evgeny Kazbekova uh, out next. I was so excited to see her make the lead final here. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's a, it's a good story. Yeah, she's amazing. She made uh, boulder finals in Hachioji. And speaking of amazing, Jane Kim, 29 World Cup wins. Nobody's ever managed more than that. Akio Noguchi's not too far behind. Friends sent me a statistic the other day. Akio Noguchi has scored ranking points in 15 IFSC seasons. Seasons, wow. <laughs> Yu Song so Zhang, uh, also in the final in uh, Chamonix, where she was second and also made the final in Brianson. She's having a very strong 2019 as well. Looked pretty handy in the semi final. Speaking of people that are having a strong 2019, Cheon Se is absolutely killing it this year. She's provided that woman there, Yanya Garmbret, with the stiffest and most unexpected of competitions this year. They are tied all the way through the competition. If they both get the same score on this final route, it will come down to time. And I think the same for uh, I and Luchka, if they make the podium. Yes, if it's uh, for a podium position and the climbers are tied, all the way through the competition then, as you rightly say, it comes down to time. Yeah. And it is Luchka and I who are tied, and Yanya and Cheyenne who are tied. So it's not all four of them, Just if you're listening at home. It's the pairs. Yeah. Yeah. God forbid it be complicated. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kind of a crazy list. I mean, all of the lead finals have been like this this year, but there are four girls who it's their breakout season. Yeah. Uh, and Yanya Gambra, out of the... Uh, out of the nine, as uh, uh, yeah, nine uh, finalists, is uh, actually the fourth oldest. We still think of her as kind of this young up-and-coming beast. Nope, she's in the older half of, of the lineup. Yeah, that's yeah. But then we've got uh, Jane Kim and Akio Noguchi, both born in the 80s. There. Good to see the. Born in the 80s. <laughs> hey, I'm 93. <laughs> well, with the odd exception, yeah. <laughs> you see uh, Luchka and uh, Yanya comparing notes there. Kira Noguchi in the background there doing her own thing. Uh, picked up podiums in 60 World Cups at Kira Noguchi. Uh, the, the longevity is absolutely breathtaking. When you think about how hard it is to get on a World Cup podium, she's done it 60 times. That's Jane wow. Kim's won 29 of them. <laughs> Um, so much as it's incredibly impressive to see these younger climbers, and it is a particularly young lineup. Yeah, I'll be really impressed if they're still doing it in 15 years, like Akio is. Exactly. Yeah, it's a a very interesting mix here with Akio and Kim Jain and and all the youngsters. So uh, Yanya not participating in Edinburgh in the IFSC European Championships a couple of weeks ago that was won by that lady. Uh, 
centre stage there with the black hair, looks Karakovic. Uh, but Yanya back in action after a disappointing Kran um, still finished in the top ten. <laughs> it is Yanya after all, but uh, first time she'd ever missed a lead semi uh, lead final. Mm -hmm. And only the second time she's ever missed. A sorry, that was the second time this year she's missed a lead sorry. semi-final. Yes. But only the third time in her life she's exactly. missed a, any final. I've, I, since we turned the microphones back on, I've, I've gone numbers, <laughs> numbers crazy. Oh, I can't seem to, can't seem to get my numbers right. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, missed a, a couple of lead finals. That's it's, been, it's been really funny watching Yanya. Um, the Boulder season was what stellar. It was. it was pretty. Yeah, there wasn't much wrong with that. Picked up the three world championships in the space of eight days in Hachiyoji. Wasn't much wrong with that. Yeah, that's all right, I guess. And also won a, a lead World Cup this year, but at times has not looked like Yanya. Mm -hmm. um, and it sometimes feels when you're watching her that she'll have a, a good weekend and then a bad weekend. It's not been like the Boulder season where you kind of turned up and every week you just thought, she's going to win this. Yeah, everybody's fighting for second Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. And it's it's felt in the lead season, maybe she's been slightly thrown by Cheyun. And Yuetong. Yeah, and Yuetong. They've been right on her yeah. tail. Um, I, I don't know, but it, it, it's it's felt like she's been a little more erratic in her form in the lead World Cups. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe she focused more on, on bouldering in her training this year. I, I don't know for sure, but uh, speculation. Yeah, she was, yeah, she, she really wanted that um, mm -hmm. Boulder title, and I think once she got to probably, f I think once she'd won four World Cups, I think she was, was like pretty focused on winning six. Yeah, um, for sure. I remember in Vale, she certainly was feeling the pressure. Yeah. Um, it was about as emotional as, as I've ever seen her in Vale, and it that was I an amazing I moment. I would say maybe you could wonder if she's taken her eyes off the ball, but given the fact that she won, as I say, three World Championships in eight days. But I think that. This year, the big thing was the Olympics, and her other secondary big thing was the all the Boulder World Cups. So, I think you know everyone deserves to relax a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh. <laughs> it's um, it's just we're so used to her basically steamrolling. Yeah. Everything. I mean, particularly in lead, she's won. Uh, if she doesn't win the overall season title this year, it'd be the first full lead season she's done that she hasn't won the title. Uh, 2016, 17, and 18, she won the, the lead season title. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, Yanya. She's, um, I've certainly felt in lead this year that you don't really know what you're going to get from her each week. Yeah. Going, I going pretty well so far in Shia men this week. Mm -hmm. Three tops of the three routes have had two qualifiers and one in semis. Yes, that's pretty good. <laughs> Although the routes haven't been particularly difficult for the field. No. The top of the field, that no. is. Yeah. And we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, I feel, I don't know if you agree, that there is a bit of a gap in the women's league climbing between the top handful and everyone else. Yeah. And I think that's really shown this week. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we had a, a big stopper move on the semi final. Yeah. And then we just had a handful that got through it and didn't even look troubled by it. Yeah. I think I think there's you sort of see a difference in endurance and also uh, the power, power endurance to be, have enough power to get through a move like that at you know, at 10 meters or wherever that move was, probably around 10 meters. So last five seconds of uh, observation. Um, just looking around, all the climbers still out getting every second they can. At times we've seen climbers kind of feel they've got the route figured out and kind of drift off uh, 10 seconds early. But here it looked like most climbers wanted to have as much of a look as they could. So the men's route this evening was a fairly straightforward. So maybe the women's route is not going to be. Yeah. No, not too different in terms of style. I think uh, you'll need to read it right. A lot of volumes rather than... Yeah. So I think a lot of times instead of aiming for a specific crimp, a specific pinch or whatever, you're aiming for the volume and how you use it and how you move around it could be so crucial. And that's how the the nine women will line up. Remember, it is nine in the women's final tonight. Had a tie in the uh, semi-final. We had a really big tie. Could have ended up with 16 women in the final. Oh, that was point. stressful for a while. <laughs> 
but we ended up, we bet it was stressful for the root setters. We ended up with nine in the end. Looks Karakovic, I'm Mori, Natsuki Tani, Ivania Kazbekova, Jane Kim, Akio Naguchi, Yutong Jang, Chen Se, and Yan Yagambret. Yeah, we nearly ended up with a massive final. Yeah, um, that would have taken a long time. Yeah, but well, luckily the, the, the men bought us loads of time by having their final wrapped up in 35 minutes. Yes. Um, it's on the ball. Yeah, exactly. They, they were on the clock. Yeah. Maybe someone had a flight to catch. Um, <laughs> but we'll see with the, uh, with the women. We, we, as I say, we are expecting the style to, to be not um, dissimilar from, uh, from the men. So a lot of volumes, body positioning, reading, the roots, body tension, uh, could all be all be key. Quite a few moves as well where if you commit to doing them and you commit to doing them wrong, it'd be pretty hard to imagine coming back and correcting your mistake. I like seeing that on women's roots because you don't see that as much as on the men's roots, I find, where you can mess up the sequence and still continue. I, I wonder. I think um, it's more interesting that way, and it's it's better. Yeah, I agree, and uh, but it, I, I think it's a route that will punish mistakes quite severely. Of course, always bear in mind that we are entirely speculating. We've talked to the route setters, and they've been on it, but we haven't been on the route and until the climbers get let loose on it, as we saw with the men's route. We don't really know much at all. Yeah, but hey, it's fun to speculate. Why not? <laughs> we'll know soon enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But uh, my predictions game has been probably weaker than my maths game recently, which is really saying something. I mean, my <laughs> oh predictions no. game has been really bad. <laughs> so uh, take everything you've heard in the last 10 minutes with uh, not just a pinch of salt. Take the whole pot, to be honest. <laughs> uh, we could get anything. But yeah, you can see where the route will go. It's uh, immediately right of the mentor. It kind of follows the same shape um, and uh, curving initially out to the left and coming back right and then a little uh, step right at the top again yeah they look very similar it's yeah and we saw the same in the semi-final kind of followed the, a similar line yeah that's true yeah, Yuka Kobayashi their uh, competitor until a couple of years ago now with Team Japan just down the front very nearly saw Kai Harada pick up his first ever World Cup win. Oh, that was such a heartbreaker. Oh, he yeah. looked so fresh on the last move, too. Yeah. I 100% thought he had it. I was kind of speculating maybe there was a slight overconfidence. You know, instead of really getting set, yeah. he just kind of launched for it. And, you know, you saw with Adam, Potentially. maybe just that bit more experience, did one extra move, a bit, little more solid. Um, That's true. But A for ambition for Kai. I mean, he just saw the top hole coming and thought, right, I'm going for it. Yeah. Um, and was not far short. No. Never won a World Cup and ended up not even on the podium. He needed the top to make the podium. I know. <laughs> he, he's never won a World Cup, but he did win the World Championships yeah, I did in say 2018. That. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good consolation. Um, I'm not sure it feels like a consolation to him right now. Probably but doesn't right now. <laughs> um but it's just one of those interesting little stats where Kai Harada, particularly this year, it felt like it felt like a, a, every big occasion he's been there. He's never just quite found yeah. found that result. But yeah. uh, he will not get much closer. I mean, he had a hand on the, the hole he needed. Mm -hmm. Couldn't quite bring it home. We can still see it up there. Probably wants to go up on the foot on the cherry picker and pull it down. <laughs> Throw it on the fire right now. Kai Harada is probably looking up at it, thinking <laughs> that hold. <laughs> But yeah, not today, sadly, for him. Hopefully next week. We've got one more lead World Cup left. Yeah, exactly. We've got another lead World Cup. Uh, and it's a home one for him. Home one. few uh, climbers not going as well. I mean, Adam Ondra's not going. Uh, Alexi Rubsov, from what I understand, is still not 100%. So there's a few, uh, I'm trying to think, talk to a couple of other people that aren't going. Um, so it could be an opportunity for Kai. But there'll be more Japanese because of the host country quota, right? Well, that's it, yeah. That's maybe... <laughs> I know, it's, I'm, I'm expecting to next week find out that there are actually uh, a dozen more world-class climbers in Japan than I'd initially realised. Yes, yeah. yeah, I'm sure we will. Every time you go to B-Pump, you kind of realise, oh yeah, I'm absolutely rubbish. <laughs> Most people in here would probably hold their own in a World Cup uh, yep. qualifying round. Mm -hmm. It's uh, presumably you're coming over. Yes, I am. Excellent. Yeah, leave tomorrow. 
Yeah, I think most people are making the trip over. I think mainly the, the training facilities are really much better in Tokyo. They're much better in Tokyo than just about anywhere else, actually. Yeah, everybody loves Tokyo, too. Yeah. Even though we were all just there a month and a half ago or whatever it was, I think everyone's ready to go back. Yeah, I think what's been interesting is I haven't heard a, a hint of, well, I've already had two weeks in Tokyo. You know, I'd kind of rather be at home. Everyone's I've just never pumped. heard that. No, yeah. Everyone's pumped to go back. Yeah, get back to Beepo. <laughs> Yeah, it could be a it could be a really fun week coming up. Actually, mm -hmm. you certainly never short of things to do in the world's biggest city. That's for sure. No. You can see Lutz Karakovic. Just to let you know, by the way, if you're wondering why we've had a, as uh, Lutz Karakovic makes her way out onto the wall, if you're wondering why we've had a, a slight delay, we're following the Chinese t uh, TV schedules. So we're kind of on a set start. So the director, I'm, I'm sure, would not have been very happy with the male climbers at how quickly they got their route done, uh, because it meant we had a bit of a delay. It also meant that we had a bit of a delay before Lutschka came out, because we had to say we're sticking to the TV shows, and we are taking our pictures from the Chinese TV, as we always do for the finals these days in China. So Lutschka underway, first of nine, not the regulation, eight. Because of the tie between her and I throughout the entire competition, I believe. Yes, uh, they are tied all the way through. Yeah, from both qualifiers to semis. Yeah, topped both qualifiers um, and then both got 33 plus in the, uh, the semi final. That stopper move. Infamous stopper move. So, yeah, Luchka, as I say, already had a good season. European champion fortnight ago, very different surroundings of Ratho and Edinburgh. And here she is on the South China Sea, looking for big results in the uh, World Cup. Just keep an eye on the uh, time, we will get a clock on screen for you uh, in just a second. She's used at one minute of her time, I'll try and keep you informed until the uh, clock is on screen. Remember, if they were tied in the final and if it came for, down for a podium place, uh, Luchka and I, Mori, it would come down to time. So we'll uh, try and get the clock on screen. And uh, if it doesn't appear on screen, I will uh, try and <laughs> we'll turn around at the key moment. Yeah, yeah. updated all the time. I've just been told, apparently, we will be getting the clock uh, <laughs> any moment. found this uh, weekend in the venue that a, a bit like the, the sea 50 meters away the Wi-Fi comes in waves oh no. sometimes sometimes we get the scores quickly sometimes the clocks there sometimes it kind of disappears for a <laughs> while um, yeah the tide was out briefly for the clock was that the just getting the VPN or the Wi-Fi itself oh, don't ask me things like that <laughs> oh no idea Everyone has their job, you know. <laughs> I don't worry about technical things like that. Not your responsibility. No, I just look at my screen and talk. Don't know how it gets there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Carry on rinsing me whenever you like. <laughs> Maybe let's get back to the climbing. Yeah. I think people at home are probably thinking, no, let's get back to rinsing him. <laughs> no, we will get back to the climbing. Uh, Lutz Karakovic, untroubled as yet. Uh, on this women's route. Mm -hmm. The two uh, dark green balls were really the, one of the only features. It's kind of a maze of, of volumes other than that. Margot Hayes came, said something very interesting as well. She said, when, when all the holes are the same color like this, it can kind of make route really a bit harder. Mm -hmm. You haven't got many landmarks. For sure. And when you're going to a lot of uh, jibs on volumes, sometimes it's hard to remember where every jib on every volume is uh, when you're up like 30 moves so we believe that she's, so we've got a, a provisional route map we should say of course of scores and judging it's all provisional but uh, she's approaching hold 30 so she's uh, so 28 29 would be the next triangular volume the two holds on that one. Yeah, the top is 38, just to give you an idea of uh, roughly how far up uh, looks to rack of edges. It hasn't really seemed to have any issues so far. No, nothing seems to be too committing. No, we were expecting it to, to look a little bit more oh. committing, just as a foot slip. 
and that will put your heart in your mouth. You can see it just shaky a little bit there. It kind of caught her by surprise. Yeah, but this hold looks pretty good on her left hand. Yes, yeah, so she's 28 29. Obviously, uh, already you can see a lot more opportunity to rest than we had on the men's route. So 38 at the top, then you can see it beckoning already. Uh, 31 and 32 are uh, the next one. That's 31, 32 is the next dual texture volume. Looks Gurakovic having to fight a little bit more now. But she's powering into the upper section. That's hole 34 there. That's a penultimate quick draw. We know Lukas Gurakovic is on fantastic form right now. Is the route a little bit undercooked? We worried it might be with Tomoe and Arasaki who ended up actually only getting three tops. Yeah, uh, still, that's uh, probably too, too many, but... Yes, but I was worried we might get oh. five or six. Looks good. Yeah, had to fight to keep the left foot on. That yeah. looked uh, crucial for a moment. She's definitely got a bit of a fight on her hands all of a sudden. Oh, this is a committing move, I think. This is a big move out to the top. Oh, man. With some little jibs. You can see the tick marks showing her where they are. Oh! And she comes up just short for a couple of moves before. She just begins to look a little bit tired. But only just. Only just, to... yes. Uh, so really seem very minimal difficulties up to that stage. She doesn't look super happy. I think she thinks the route is a bit under undercooked. Yeah, I think you could be right. So Lutzka first out. Uh, I Mori, who's out next, doesn't seem to get tired. So we'll see how she uh, deals with the route. She Some of these moves at the bottom were pretty big. Yes, we'll see how she deals with them as well. Yeah, of course, Luchka's much taller than I, so maybe she's she's cruised the lower section uh, cru and, and then found she was getting a little tired near the top, maybe the other way around for Aimori, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see. This is another look at uh, Luchka. Let's have a look at this top move. Oh. She was good at the left hand. I think by the time the right hand got there, she was already on the way down. Mm. You can see it uh, in the spotlight. Probably the last thing you want when all you want to do is get your shoes off and <laughs> Especially if and you're relax. not super happy. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There's a bigger light. So we'll be, uh, as I say, I'm Mori out next. Here she comes. She's been uh, one of the stories of 2019. A lot of people really enjoyed watching her. You might remember in Hachiochi, um made a fairly major route reading error in the lead final and then looked absolutely gassed, wasted loads of energy, and then suddenly... It, it, it that was amazing. <laughs> it's like when you pick up a bonus in Mario Kart. Suddenly you just <laughs> went back up you know, yeah. and, and, and just... Five, ten moves further on, it was like nothing had ever happened. Yeah. Um, a few people sent me messages about that. I remember when I got back to the hotel, I was looking at WhatsApp. What was that with Imori? Yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing performance. And she's, uh, even amongst the standard of World Cup League climb, has got exceptional endurance. That moment in Hachioji was for me very much like the moment where Sean in the uh, combined qualifier uh, Z clipped. Yes. And yeah, I and then think I shed a tear or two. <laughs> well, there was a lot riding on that Z clip <laughs> and I was sure he'd, he'd fluffed his lines. Yeah. And he hadn't. Nope. He, just like I, he bared down and did the thing. Oh, this is a big move. Luchka made this one look long as well. Yeah. Yeah, often when we see someone cruise a series of moves, it's easy when the next climber comes out to expect them to cruise it as well. Mm -hmm. You kind of forget everyone's like a body shape, different climbing style. So she, Luchka and I are like complete opposites in the, on the height spectrum. Yeah. 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 The final. So I'm already being forced to drop down. Remember, of course, they are tied on time. Um, if it was to come down to it, she's burning quite a bit of time here. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the most important thing is that you don't fall off whilst doing the move. Oh. And that's exactly what's happened for Imori. Oh, man. Oh, and that is a disappointing result. Lutz Karakovic, I think, in part due to her height, really was 
more or less untroubled until at least halfway up the route. Yeah. Um, Aymori really struggling, and she didn't like the look of that move at all. When it had a look at the arrowhead volume out to the left, decided to go up to the, the rounded one. Yeah, it definitely looks like that is the sequence, but... Yeah, we just look at the route map. Well, I think the arrowhead volume is quite far out to the left, too. Yeah, I mean, the, the one she went for is marked as hold 11 and 12, and then the arrowhead to the left is 13, which obviously suggests you go up and then left. But um, it looked like she kind of had a look at, at two different ways of doing it. Yeah. Uh, went for what we think is the right way. It didn't work. Uh, well, let's have to see how the other shorter climbers deal with this as well. Yeah, well, Natsuki Tani, who's making her way out now, is another of the uh, shorter climbers. Back in action. We didn't see her for a, a couple of events, but here she is again. Yeah, incredibly strong, deceptively strong. Can hang on for days. <laughs> She also doesn't like to commit to anything. No, she, she has got that it's got to be right style. Yeah. I think she might need to channel her in the Yanya here. <laughs> I'll just commit to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Inner Yanya, inner Tomoa. Yeah, exactly. It might be right, it might be wrong, but I'm going for it anyway. Yep. And yeah. I'm going to stick it anyway yeah. as well. <laughs> That's, yeah. I think we've all got a bit of that. The difference with them is they managed to stick it. <laughs> she, I think she could do with uh, channeling a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. So third climber out. We've seen almost the top. We've seen a fall low down. I feel like we, we don't really know anything about this route just yet. Yeah. Not, not too much. Uh, very, very initial impressions would be that if you're taller, the lower section is easier. That's only judging from, from one tall climber and one smaller climber. We might find out a little bit more here from Natsuki Tani. This is where we lost Aimori. Um, she, she thought about going to that arrowhead out to the left, then decided oh to do it that way. And Natsuki Tani's now got uh, the same problem that her compatriot Aimori had just a couple of minutes ago. She'll just have to jump and commit at some stage. Yeah. Here she goes. Oh, nice. Oh, makes it work. Oh. I think it's one of those moves, I guess, where um, nothing's going to appear. Yeah. You haven't got much to work with. I think so I hung around. Yeah. Waiting for something different to happen. Yeah, exactly. Too long. Um, it holds. It just doesn't get any closer. You just got to go for it eventually. Suki so Tani did really well there. And the quicker you commit, the uh, the more energy you'll have to do the moves. Yeah. yeah. So we we'll just try and regain a little bit of, of composure. We threw a little bit, initially going up for that hold and coming up short to get back in the climbing rhythm. Big moves, yeah. Uh, she's, as she's firmly got herself back on track now. It's interesting, now I'm trying to replay in my head Luchka climbing. And picture if there are any more similar moves. I don't think any of the next couple moves were that stretchy for Luchka. Well, we've still got Jane Kim to come again, who's oh pretty yeah. small. Uh, Cheon's so, yeah, pretty small. So. Seiyun and Yue Tong are about the same height. Yeah. A bit taller than Natsuki and Aimori, I think. But yeah, I'm a big believer that over the course of a, a World Cup, certainly over the course of a season, height, advantages, disadvantages, even out. At but least they should. They should. Yeah. But it would seem there's definitely a, a mo one move at least favoring the tall bit lower down on this one. I think often it's easier to make a move that favors a tall climber than a move that favors a shorter climber. 
but that's you know, sort of the job of the resetter is to make it even out. Not sort of, it is. That's who you can it out. Seems, uh, seems pretty back on track. Definitely going to be a little bit pumped. You can see just uh, puffing her cheeks a little bit. A little shouldery. Yeah, again, have to be careful not to uh, accidentally touch that bolt. <laughs> Let's not go there. Nope. <laughs> She's only got one more clip uh, above that. Absolutely at the limit of her reach, that clip. Drops back down now. She's on hold 28-29. So the next blue, uh, the next green me, triangle, that one there, is uh, 30. So she's touched hold uh, 31 and 32, but hasn't really hung on to them just yet. Uh, I have to say, I think the route looks really toppable. So she's that pretty last well move looks enormous. It does. It does. Um, I think she's well advised to kind of figure each move out because I think you'll probably need a top to win, would be my guess. 55 seconds to go. Oh, Mr. Director, back to Matsuki. There we go. Um, yeah, the top move does look enormous. Can she arrive there with a little bit of energy? She actually, to keep one eye on the clock, I mean, 40 seconds is a long time for the distance to go, but she's been taking her time for these last few moves. So it's 37 plus for Lux Gurekovic, it's as good a score as you can get without topping the route. Uh, Natsuki actually pretty pushed for time all of a sudden. 17 seconds now, needs to get herself set and needs to commit. Here she goes, and she comes up short. Same as uh, Lux Gurekovic, she'll move into first place due to count back to previous rounds. But you're right, that top move looks absolutely massive. It's good performance from her. She did well to get through that uh, lower move. She clearly didn't like the look of it. Did all that she could do by just committing. Yeah, it was a, a good commitment and a, a quick decision to make the commitment from her. It was good. So Evgenia Kazbekova will be uh, out next to, as you say, made the final in Hachioji. In bouldering. Yeah, in bouldering. Yeah. And she made the combined semi-final. Yeah. Um, I was talking to someone about Evgenia, kind of, as we've seen Natsuki. I thought, actually, we, we saw it from a bit of fun yang, funny angle. I thought she got a leg course on the rope. Mm. I thought it looked a slightly awkward fall. Yeah. I, kind of I think it was because of that heel hook she put in. Yeah. Um, here is Evgenia Kazbikova in the World Championships. Yeah, it seemed to be going so well, and then in the combined, it just didn't seem to quite work, did it? The com yeah. You remember the combined qualifying day? Well, of course, you were climbing. Yeah. Uh, so you probably weren't paying much attention, but it just felt like it just got away from Evgenia. Just a couple of boulders didn't go right. Suddenly her head dropped, and it was, it yeah. was a shame, really. Um, but she'll be uh, firmly in to lose. Yes. Yeah, she's very safely in Toulouse. She's yeah. a, had a stellar or a couple of results in, in bouldering and lean, so. Yeah, looking pretty good for Toulouse. Yeah. Which, of course, the invitations will go out and we'll know exactly who's in Toulouse after next weekend in Inzai. Yes, uh, the Toulouse Olympic selection uh, event is for climbers who've competed in at least uh, two World Cups in each discipline. So it's, uh, but and it's only it's the, the top 20, top 20 yeah. uh, minus everybody who's already qualified for the Olympics and only up to a maximum of two per country per gender. <sighs> so that means that Japan <laughs> can't send, you know, 100. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, further down the Olympic qualification pathway, of course, we've got to European champs. Mm -hmm. uh, Pan Am, each continent has its own championship, yep. and the winner of that Oceanics, will get an Olympics. The yeah. Asian championships, yeah. Yeah, so uh, still plenty of routes for all the climbers, including uh, Evgenia. But uh, if you don't make it at Toulouse, you're under real pressure. Come on, pressure. Evgenia, come on. 
Now then, setting Come yourself right. up for this big move. Yes. And actually, it's just fine using all that bouldering contact strength. flexibility from Evgeny. The only problem is then getting out of this position. Oh, I was worried for a second. I thought she really needed the heel. I was worried she was going to try with a toe. <laughs> wow. Very well, it was, it was really good flexibility. In a way, it looked like it made the move a little harder. I think so, yeah. You kind of ended up with your feet too high. And she spent a lot more time there messing around with her feet than she yeah. had to. left certainly not climbing as quickly as the men's route did and that, that was all done and dusted for most climbers within two three minutes really fast route but these these girls aren't worried about time these women aren't worried about time no uh, if Genia is not tied with anyone by the way so uh, time won't be a factor in her result just how high she gets yes exactly so ideally uh, at least jumping for the top for her yeah, well, jumping if for the top, top. Yeah, jumping for the top would put her in first place for now. Yeah, provisional um, first, but of course yeah. there's four climbers. After, sorry, five climbers after her. Yeah. Keep forgetting it's a nine climber final. Yes, could have been sixteen. <laughs> yeah, go back and watch the semi-finals if you didn't earlier on. We just had this one move, and I, I don't think the route setters had really felt it was kind of one of the cruxes, uh, and it just. Just off climber after climber after 16, climber. 16, 15 women or something? It was... I think it was something like that, yeah. It was... Um, brutal. Yeah, it was, it was amazing uh, how many climbers were, were struggling on exactly the same move. We saw a couple of different methods. Meanwhile, Evgenia is uh, heading out on the traverse rightwards. Still got quite a lot of distance to cover, actually, with only 2.20 left on the clock. She's definitely, She's you can tell, the pump's looking, kicking in. Yeah, looking a little tired. Of course, one of the advantages of climbing quicker is you get the moves done quicker. Mm -hmm. Not there as, as long to get tired, and she has been there relatively long, four minutes on the wall already. That's a decent amount of time. And she's got yeah, quite a lot of climbing still to go, actually. Uh, she's on hold... 27 out of 38. So, yeah, could probably do with getting a bit of a move on. And we saw from Natsuki Tani it's possible to rest or at least uh, think about the top moves. Mm -hmm. She kind of stopped on, on pretty much every black and red volume. So it's not like once she gets up there, she's got to just keep motoring. Oh. Oh, just, uh, just about held on to that one of Genia Kazmikova. Really fighting now, slapping up with that right hand onto the final uh, green triangle. She skipped the clip. Yeah. She's too pumped. Came. She knew it. It seemed like when the pump came, it came quite quickly. Yeah. It came pretty fierce. <laughs> you can see there. Looks glad to just be off her arms. <laughs> Evgenia Kazmikova gave that one absolutely everything. It'll move her into fourth for now. Uh, it was already looking good for comfortably making it to Toulouse for the Olympic selection event, but this result would really have helped. So this was when yeah, she was starting to look really tired. That slap with the right hand. Yeah. You can see there, once she skipped the clip, you knew that she was just going for the plus. Yeah, just whatever she could get. So we could see the uh, scores. Natsuki Tani leading the way ahead of Luchka Rakovic on countback. Both of them attempted the final move. Neither of them managed to stick it. Evgenia Kazbekova ends up in third. Aymari, who sadly slipped it pretty low down, going for quite a reachy move, not really suited to her style, ends up with a 10 plus. And we just had a look here. 
at the current overall rankings if things were to end now for qualification for to lose remember she best this is best two results uh, that in, every, counts each, in discipline. each discipline and uh, again here is currently in 13 this is um this list though is subtracting uh everybody who's already qualified for the olympics and every third or everybody who is not in the top two of their country so, so it's a, a representative yeah provisionally list, uh going into toulouse evgeny is sitting in 13th place which, of course, with 20 going, she's pretty comfortably in there. Just checking where you were. <laughs> 15th. Yeah, in there. That'll do. Yeah. Uh, Jane Kim out next, and Akio Naguchi, Yutong Jang, Chen Se, and Yan Yagamba at the five uh, climbers still to go. The two veterans first, uh, Jane and Akio. Uh, really strong final five actually I mean if you were to talk about the uh, greatest competition climbers of all time on the women's side certainly there'd be three names Absolutely. in that I'm final five say, yeah. uh, and it'll be Jane out next I'll be interested to see how she uh, gets on with that move where we lost I Mori because she is also like I she doesn't like to commit too hard no she's definitely um, I feel like she's definitely much better at that than she was a oh, few years back. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but it's still, it's going to require her going for it. Here she is, Jane Kim, hunting that 30th World Cup win. She would be the first person ever to win 30 World Cups if she could do it. Not a bad tally. Uh, she's currently tied, by the way, with uh, Akio and, uh, and Natsuki. Uh, no, sorry, uh, just uh, just a kill. As Mr. Reed this calls. Uh, oh the, yeah, all the way through. Yeah, all the way through. That's so right. it could would come to time if they're tied on the uh, on the same move. See her starting her watch, uh, Jane Kim. Uh, That's so uh, that she goes. if she's halfway up, she can look and see how much time she has left without having to look down at the timer on the ground. Always great to watch Jane Kim climb. So smooth. I always said it, if you could, if I could climb like anyone, it'd be Jane Kim. I don't know. I I might choose Tomoa myself. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> You'd look pretty cool. <laughs> I just love the the cruising hard roots look, though. Yeah, like it's nothing. Yeah. When she falls off, it's, you don't get a gasp, from the, uh, a groan from the crowd. You get a gasp. It's, you just can't can't believe she's fallen off. So she's just a couple of moves short now of where we uh, lost Aimori. Yeah, let's see how she deals with this one yeah she uh, also kind of wondering how to tackle it I think she won't be too troubled by it no yeah full commitment gets it done easy so 37 plus leading the way 38 is the top hold of course, you suppose you could score a 38 if you didn't manage to. You've got to clip the top quick draw for it to count as a top, but uh, won't get much closer than 37 plus on this route. Oh, it looked a little uh, sketchy for a minute with both Seyun and Yanya in semifinals. Yes. This clip was so far away. <laughs> I actually spoke to Yanya about that at lunch. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She said, oh, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't reach a quick draw <laughs> yeah. to get up, get back on and kind of shuffle, shuffle back. Yeah. and getting a bit of a better position. It's happened to her a couple of times this season. Brian Son as yeah, well, yeah. right? Yeah. Couldn't reach the, uh, the quick draw. So remember, uh, speaking of Cheon and Yanya, they're both tied as well. So 
Uh, time definitely a potential factor. I think time is definitely a factor here for Jane Kim as, as well. 3.20 left. Almost it's halfway through her time. And yeah. really only halfway through the route. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, barely halfway, really. Yeah. I think she's... I mean, hold 19 is that one there, um, which is the halfway point, oh, and yeah. she hits it at half her time. Well, so, so she's perfectly on pace, she's actually. She's perfectly on pace, yeah. yeah. Um, but it could be a medal uh, decided by time with her and Akio, so... Akio's not exactly the fastest climber no, either. No, that's true, actually, yeah. Um, Obviously, though, the approach has to be get the route done and then worry about the time. Start thinking about the time before you've done the moves and you are in trouble. But, uh, then you probably won't eye. do the moves. Exactly. <laughs> Don't take your eye off the ball. Okay, just uh, heading up. She's got uh, three green volumes left and she'll be on to the red and black for the final eight moves. Yeah, and again, just keep an eye on that clock. Two minutes, five. It's enough time. But it's not loads of time. Mm -hmm. Could have a home World Cup, uh, from what I've seen on the IFSC website yeah, this year. Yeah, that's what I heard in, in Seoul. Next May. A Boulder one, though. Yes. She has won Boulder World Cups. That's, yeah, fair. She's mostly known as lead climber right now, but no. that's not, like, that's not her only. She do point. everything. <laughs> She's gotten quite a bit faster in speed. Yeah. I saw her on Friday. Kadoon's getting a little bit faster here as well, I think. 115 now. Yeah. Uh, again, she's got time, but there are kind of ample rest opportunities, and if you take all of them, I think she could struggle a little bit. It looks deceptively close, but if you really paused on every move, you could suddenly find yourself a little bit pushed for time. Yeah, yeah she's, she's moving now. Yeah, I think she's probably timed this to perfection. Yeah, well, with all of her experience, I think she knows exactly what she's doing. I don't think we need to worry about her at all. I don't think we do, actually, no. She's timed this to perfection, Jane Kim. It's just a little bit lower down, looks like she might be pushed for time, but she's just cut down on the rest and the shakeouts ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Kind of got going. It's a tricky little hand swap. She wants to get her left hand, ideally, uh, on top, perhaps. No, leave it there. There is a tiny little jib there. I thought she might put her hand on top. Now she'll get herself set, uh, Jane Kim. There's no way around the fact that this is a big move up for the top. Oh. Can she do it statically? Apparently. Yes, she can. 12 seconds to go. Needs to get the rope clipped. She will have time to do this, Jane Kim. We could be about to see our first top of the route. There it is. Four seconds to spare. We said she timed wow. it perfectly. That was impressive. <laughs> oh, fantastic <laughs> stuff from Jane Kim. The legend that is Jane Kim. Lowers down off the wall. The B-layer letting her down really slowly. That's the uh, So that the crowd can applaud and she can soak it up got there according to the clock on the screen it was uh, three seconds to go look when I with the naked eye looked like four seconds it's very unlikely to come down to the second but uh, yeah Jane Kim looked pretty happy with that one that was pretty impressive well we both thought that top move looked massive and she just yeah she just locked it off just kind of leaned over and there it was yeah I suppose if you can lock off on whatever on earth it was she was locking off on it's good, it's all good. Uh, I want to see someone jump and stick it, though. That'll be pretty cool. I hope Yanya does. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly powerful um, locking off with your hand. I mean, kind of level with the bottom of her ribs. Instant, I love this role, instantly stops her watch. Even though the, the work is done, she reached down and stopped her oh, watch. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't see that. Just um, out of habit. Just, yeah. Just a professional. Yeah. Well, she didn't want it to read over six minutes, right? Yeah. Cause there you go. <laughs> well 
Kyo Noguchi, as ever, giving absolutely nothing away when she walks out onto the wall. We've often seen a Kyo kind of explode into emotion, but only when the job is done. Yeah, you don't see any premature celebrating, any waving to the crowd. Nope. Just Total gets on focus. with it. Well, if you've been to as many World Cups as Akio has been on the podium at, you're a very experienced climber. So uh, she certainly knows exactly what she needs to get the best out of her climbing. As one of the taller climbers, it'll be interesting to see how or if she struggles with that that big move that we lost Aimori at. So she topped one route, 35 plus on the other in the qualifiers. Uh, that was Kyo the top Noguchi. move. Yeah. yeah, going for the top and then the 38 plus in the uh, semi-final. So just a one top across uh, the three routes. But the margins have been pretty fine at the, the top end of the women's routes mm -hmm. over the past couple of days of competition here in Xiamen. Lots of tops. Yeah, it's been three days of competition here. We had speed qualifiers on Friday, uh, lead qualifier speed final yesterday, and of course the semi finals and the lead finals today. It's been a, a busy few days on the South China Sea. Oh, and that's an unusual, uh, uncharacteristic little stumble Pause, from, yeah. uh, from Akio. Kind of had the impression she went back down, had a quick word with herself. <laughs> Quickly put Just it right. Get on with it. Yeah, up you go. Another one of those climbers that, like Jane Kim, is pretty mesmerizing to watch. So smooth. Yeah, I'd actually be torn between Jane Kim and Akira Noguchi if I could, you know, clip my fingers and have someone's climbing style. Mm -hmm. S I mean, sadly, I don't think I'll ever have to make the choice. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to ask anytime soon. No, un unless my training regime changes pretty drastically. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, climbing quicker than Jane Kim, that's for sure. Remember, they are tied. Time may be a factor. Jane Kim currently in first place with a top. As long as Akio tops faster than her, though. So she'll, yeah, she'll in move up. Less than five minutes and what, 57 seconds? 57 according to the clock, maybe 56. I mean, it, if they were tied that closely that the judges were going back and looking at the clock, you kind of feel like they just share the medal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, it, it depends on what uh, Yutong, Seyun, and Yanya Well, that's true, yeah. Them, they so. might end up not on the podium at all. Yeah. But we have, yeah, we have got some ties we'd like to separate, that's for sure. Yeah, plenty of time left for Akio, three minutes down here. Jane had uh, pretty much a minute less at this stage. perspective exactly where she is on the wall final green volume beckons bags of time left she's just over halfway really through her time the top here will yeah almost certainly unless she can somehow burn two minutes on the final few moves will almost certainly move a keo uh, up into first place with three climbers to go She's actually, she said burn, you, know, you wouldn't have thought you could burn two minutes. She's taking a very long rest here. Now she goes launching into the top section. Still bags of time remaining. Oh, yeah. Just focus on climbing Akio. 
suddenly seems to have stepped up the pace quite considerably. Trying to get through these moves with as little fatigue as possible. Oh, oh. Like that. Gets a heel hook in place. Can she have a go at this last move? Will she do it statically? Will she do it dynamically? I think we're about to find out. Akio getting herself uh, set to go here. Going for the heel hook. I think she's going for it statically as well. Leans over, creeping that left hand across. And there it is. Needs to get the clip done. Little final shakeout just gives you an idea. She is actually pretty pumped. Yeah. Oh, it was a tad sketchy on the clip, but she did it. Great work from Akio Naguchi. She'll move into first place ahead of Jane Kim as it is, uh, as it stands on time. But with three climbers still to go, may not end up even on the podium. Mm -hmm. just checking the results. Yes, yeah, straight she came over. Down. <laughs> there you go, you're she's, first, don't worry. Yeah, just realized she's in first. Yeah. That's a nice moment to see always when, when somebody realizes. I wonder as well if when she saw the scoreboard she thinks, okay, two people have topped this already. Yeah. I don't fancy my chances of winning here. Potentially. Um, which is why she might have been a little bit more muted in her celebrations when she actually came down and, and had had a look at, uh, at the screen. Kikina Gucci in her 15th IFSC season. Wow. Still doing it. So Yutong Zhang out next, finalist in Chamonix. She picked up a, a silver medal there and also made the final in uh, Briançon. Having a quick chat with, I think that's Meichi Narasaki. That's Suki Tani in the background there. Uh, was leading the way for a while. Here's Yutong Zhang, the only Chinese climber in either of the finals this evening. Suddenly the crowd comes to life. They've been very quiet so far this evening. They were waiting for her. They were waiting, yeah. Take it, you can see the clock took you away to signify her observation time. I think she's going to take pretty much every second of it. Mm -hmm. You're allowed 40 seconds of observation time before you get on the route, which does not count towards your six minutes of climbing time. So she's uh, on the wall, 20 seconds elapsed, just making her way through the red and black volumes. We saw this on the men's route as well. Kind of funky, uh, slightly funky start for both men and women. And uh, yeah, it would seem, it certainly was the case in the men's route, and it would seem in the women's route, the route's perhaps slightly too easy. Yeah kind of the whole way through the competition for the women. Not semi so much, but qualifiers. Yeah, it's, I mean, I say it every week, but it needs to be said, the route setters have got the hardest job in climbing. Absolutely. You're just making these mini decisions. Do we put a jib on? Which jib do we put on? Do we put it, the, the volume at this angle or that angle? And, and it can make all the difference. Also, when you set the routes in the daytime and then they're being climbed at night, the temperature yeah. changes so much here. I mean, earlier on today, it was so hot. Blistering. And now we're sitting here with jackets on. Yeah. As Yutong Jiang uh, got a big shout from the MC as she made, made that move. If no hesitation. No. That but was if she, excellent. If she didn't know before, it was an important move. The MC basically uh, <laughs> let her know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's the toughest, toughest job in climbing and perhaps this evening that they're, they're just a tiny bit too easy but as you rightly say it's gone from it was over 30 degrees it was so hot in the day uh, to, to dry breezy cool I mean the conditions on the wall must be superb now yeah pretty perfect those volumes must be super sticky right now 
Yeah, they must be, <laughs> to be ideal. So there's a nice sea breeze coming in. And uh, we can see, I mean, we haven't really had any any big foot slips um, on this women's side. No, just on the men's side, I guess. Yeah. Meiji. Yeah. Um, but on the women's side, not not really any at all. If Genia Kazbikova and I, Mori, in fact, the only two climbers from the six who've been up there, um, apart from Yutong, not to attempt the last move. Um, so, sadly, on this occasion, it looks like it's a little bit too straightforward. Could provide us with a, a different type of exciting finish, though, if it came down to time with Cheon and Yanya. Um, I'm sure they're well aware that the route's been topped a couple of times, or could well be by the time they get here. Yeah, and they're they probably sitting uh, in that tunnel right now. Right underneath us, yeah. Yeah, right underneath us. Um, and so they'll for sure know, they'll hear if say, or if uh, Yotong tops it. Yeah, they will hear it, because the crowd comes to life whenever she does one of the key moves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... Yutong, of course, could win the competition. If she tops, she'll move into first place. And if Yan Yun, Che uh, Don't top? Don't top? Yeah. I wouldn't bet on both of them not topping. No, I this, wouldn't. Though. But it's possible. It, yes, yeah, anything's possible. Not likely, but possible. Absolutely. Two fifteen left for uh, Yutong, and she um, a bit like Jane Kim. Yeah, just over halfway now. Yeah, needs just to barely needs to keep an eye on the time. That is for sure. Yeah, we'll see if her being a lot less experienced than Jane uh, is has actually timed this well or not. Yeah, I mean Jane Kim. I feel somewhat foolish for doubting her. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> we, yeah. Big mistake on our part. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's James Kim. Yeah, of course, yeah. he's got it right to the second. But this is, Yutong is 16. Yeah, much younger climber, yeah. much less experience. Oh. Trying to, yeah, it doesn't look at this move. Jump. Crowd are kind of uh, getting a little bit restless. Trying to see what she'll Whoa. do. Now they respond. She got that absolutely right. Everybody else did that totally statically and made it look really hard. But that jump looked way better. A lot less uh, shoulder intensive. I think like Jane Kim, she's timed this pretty well, actually. Mm -hmm. Now that she's got there, she's got through those moves. A minute to go to negotiate the final oh. section. Oh. What happened there? Right hand just gave way, didn't it? And then just... She managed to hold on to it. Yeah. I think getting tired and may well have just thought to herself, right, I'm going. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, okay. Suddenly the pace goes from fairly conservative to very, very fast indeed. Mm -hmm. And I think not so much because of the time, but because she's quite pumped. Yeah, it seemed to seem to come quite yeah. quickly. And yeah. Suddenly uh, went from super in control. Seems to have the timing about right, pretty similar to Jane Kim in terms of pace. And suddenly the pump kicked in. Yeah, so interestingly now Yanya and Seyun being below they probably were around when Akio topped. Um, yeah, so they probably know the route's been topped. Yeah, um, well, but Talk us through the journey from isolation here. How far is it? How, how early would they bring you out? Um, two climbers, two to three climbers probably. Uh, and the journey is maybe 200 meter walk or something. So, and it's in a building. Uh, so you definitely wouldn't be able to hear from there the cheers, or probably. But what was interesting about the men's final is we were saying that the last two climbers probably didn't know that the first two climbers had topped because they yeah. wouldn't have been in the on deck area when they when it happened although she could have a look at the scoreboard that's true I mean, that's not we don't often sometimes don't see that did, where they can did she just do that or no i think okay. she just uh, ignored it uh, to it's be honest, kind of facing away from her but and as well i mean i think there's a lot to be said um, for just 
concentrating on your climbing. Yeah. You know, you can think, oh, they didn't top, so if I can get there, I'll be, I'll do this, and I need to climb quicker than this person. I mean, just. But you may as well just top. Yeah, top the route just in focus your style. On topping yeah. It. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes I'm guilty of kind of over speculating what might be going through people's heads, and what's going through their head is, I'm just going to climb this route. Yeah. Just focusing 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so Cheon now, winner of uh, three of the four World Cups we've had so far in 2019. Is it, it Cheon or Seyun? I've been told it's Cheon. Okay, okay. So I heard it was Seyun, so I'm, I, not, I'm not I, sure. I uh, have never been to South Korea, okay. so I do... I, I, uh, I was taught a little bit of Korean once. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, yeah, can't remember it. I can't. And don't know, basically. I know we're supposed to cheer for her uh, as as Gaja. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we. we um, well, I was saying we might be heading over there mm, next year. Cheon uh, didn't seem phased by that. Not at all. Potentially big move. She hasn't really seemed phased by uh, anything all season, actually. I thought it was interesting, actually, in uh, Hachiyoji. Um, Cheon, obviously, having had the July she had as we moved through the Alps, mm -hmm. when she got to Hachiyoji, it just kind of felt like the, the sheer volume of the climbing just defeated her a little bit. Yeah, I think so. And maybe you saw the difference then between her and the Yanyas and the Kios, who, who are used to dealing with that amount mm -hmm. of climbing. I she looked tired by the end. Yes, definitely. By the combined qualifier, she looked tired. Um, and... I was wondering, too, if part of it could have been the pressure because she did not compete in any bouldering World Cups this year. I wonder if they didn't, she wasn't registered in any because they sort of didn't know how good she was. And all of a sudden, she came out and just destroyed lead. And her only two chances for qualifying for the Olympics then were Hachioji. And then after that, could be winning. Uh, the Asian Championships. Which is a tough call. It's a t very tough. Yeah. So, Hachiuji was kind of her big chance. Yeah. And I, I wonder if she was feeling any of that. I, no, I, I, I don't know. Agree. Of course. Well, she's um, that's ever so slightly reminiscent of Jane Kim, where you, you kind of find yourself watching her and going, oh, oh, she's finding it hard. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. I mean, she's absolutely passed it up to here mm -hmm. um, and she's moving at a really good pace she hasn't really paused no well, it's not that hard for her why would she pause <laughs> that's true <laughs> I don't pause walking down the street and she seems to be finding it about as difficult so yep so she's far just keeping on going three minutes left she's already right near the top I mean I think we're going to have to keep a very close eye on the time here uh, Yanya most certainly will be in the tunnel right underneath us, uh, oh, ready to enter the venue. For sure. So, Probably putting her shoes on right now. Uh, Chen now got the penultimate quick draw clipped. You love that word. I do, actually, yeah. It's, it's my only four-syllable word. Gonna now go for the static. Will she jump? I think she's oh, going static yeah. again. Yeah. For sure. Got the heel hook in place. Could be about to see a top here. Keep an eye on the time because it could be crucial if Yanya, oh. if she was to top the route and then Yanya was to top the route, the time would be absolutely crucial. It would decide who wins the competition here in Xiamen. It might keep alive the overall race for 2019. Goes oh. up with the left hand. It looks like she only just stuck it. Whew. Yeah, just caught the corner of the volume. Didn't even hit the jib on it. And gets the clip done with 147, I think, left on the clock. Shown 146. Somewhere around there. Yanni Garnbrett, if she wants to win this, is going to have to climb very, very quickly indeed. Uh, have you ever seen a climber lower down, having topped a final route, looking quite as nonplussed as that? No, I don't think so. I mean, that is... Uh, she knows. She knows it was far too easy. It's not a, yeah. To it's be able to separate her and Yanya. Yeah, it's not a climber that looks like she's had a huge challenge. Remember, of course, uh, if she wins tonight, that's she's sewn up the overall title. Right. Um, Yanya can keep it alive for another week. 
with a win here would actually it would require Cheon to have a complete disaster in Inzai and Yanya to win. Right. But it would mathematically still be alive. Uh, so there's a lot riding on this. I've just shifted to the edge of my seat. I suspect a few people in the venue have done the same. World Cup win on the line here, but Yanya Garmret has got to get up there in about four minutes and ten seconds, mm -hmm. we think. So three tops on the men's side, three in the women's so far. Might end up with a fourth. Sadly, the routes just haven't really worked out tonight, to be perfectly honest. Um, Bit too easy. So they give out the same number of points regardless. Yep. Um, and it's still a World Cup win. Still 100 points. Still 100 points, still a win. Yanya yeah, looking to add another one to her uh, considerable tally. One of the few records she doesn't hold is most World Cup wins of all time. And that's only because she's just 18 or something, right? Yes, yeah, 20. Oh, 20 now, okay. Yeah. yeah, fourth oldest climber in this final. Ancient. Yeah, no. I don't know why she still bothers. <laughs> so, uh, her natural style is quick. Yeah, and it's quick committing. Mm -hmm. If in doubt, go for it. Uh, and she'll need every bit of that here. So, I don't doubt that she can top it in less than four minutes and ten seconds. I'd yeah, it's really hard to get a grasp on how quickly she's going until she gets kind of halfway. She's only burned 30 seconds and she's already at move 10. Yes. So it's not bad, for sure. So powerful as well through these moves. Yeah. It just doesn't look in doubt, does it? Never. Um, absolute silence here in Shearman. It's really quite eerie. Even Team Slovenia are quiet. Uh, yeah, and you're one minute elapsed. She is climbing really, really quickly. She's like getting close to halfway now. We might remember in Vila, she dropped her chalk bag. Oh yeah. Um, and then still topped the semi-final route. You kind of, when she's racing the clock like this, on a route that you'd imagine, unless she makes any major errors, she should find fairly straightforward. Maybe it's barely worth chalking up. <laughs> Just save the time. Yeah. Well, obviously your hands don't get that sweaty. She had managed to top the semi-final route with uh, that was a chalk bag. Extraordinary. If I remember right, that was quite a, a bottlenecky route as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. I missed Vila. I seem to remember you being uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, this is an interesting foot choice. And what's uh, Yang's yeah. plan here? There we go. He's got it sorted out. Oh, good. So remember, 146.47. It's not official. It's uh, only what we spotted here. So she's got about two was, minutes left. Yeah, was was the time that Cheon uh, had left when she topped the route. I think Yanya is actually going quicker than Cheon. Mm -hmm. Memory serves me right. From yeah, maybe about the same, but Cheon definitely rested. Uh, you might remember as well, uh, Innsbruck 2018 World Champs, Jesse won on time and it yes. and Yanya kind of messed about on the last move. Yes. Burned I a load of time. So I do remember that. That was heartbreaking. I don't think the Austrian crowd felt that way. That was no. a good night in Innsbruck. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I yeah, mean, it was just no, heartbreaking no. that she was there yeah. early and then... And didn't quite manage to bring it home. She's yeah. definitely going to have time here, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, she's got over a minute still, Yanya. There is the top beckoning. She hasn't looked pumped. She hasn't looked really troubled by anything. She absolutely crushed the route, let's be honest. Doing everything precisely. She's got a minute to use up, should she want it. She's... Uh, oh. <gasps> jumps to the top and misses it. Oh, and Yanya chose to go for the dynamic method. Needed the static method, and oh that means man. that Cheyun wins, and that means that Cheyun wins the season. That's pretty exciting for Cheyun. Cheyun. Oh, Yanya looks absolutely furious at herself. I have to say, she should be furious at herself. We've yeah. seen, she hasn't seen what we've seen, but yeah. I think she knew it could be done statically and just launched. But I think so, so often, uh, the last moves of Roots are big jumps showy jumps and 
that's probably what got in her head. I so mean, this comp as well, all three other routes have been a jump to the finish hold. Or no, not the semi-final, sorry. But both qualifiers were. And finals. But what's been amazing is, yes, there's no question the routes have been a bit too easy tonight. But on both the men's and the women's, the last climb has come out, jumped for the top to win the competition, oh. and binned it. Hmm. So let's have another look. Two I mean, heartbreakers. <gasps> oh, you, you could see a frustration. As soon as she let go, she knew she'd fluff that. Yeah. And I think if she comes back and watches the live stream and sees the relative ease with which people did that move, yeah. she could be a little bit frustrated. So pretty dramatic well, I end. I think she's pretty frustrated right now. I think she could be, yeah. There we see it, Yanni Garmrit misses the podium. How often do we say that? So it's three tops in the men's get uh, needed a top to get on the podium. Three tops in the women's needed a top to get on the podium. It's Chen Sir, Kyo Noguchi and Jane Kim. Two medals uh, for South Korea. And, Pretty good. Uh, yeah, not a bad haul. And uh, another one for Japan. Uh, Yanni Garmrit missing out. She ends up in fourth place. Uh, Natsuki Tani ends up fifth, Lutzka Rakovic in uh, sixth, Yutong Chang in seventh, Genia Kaspikova eighth, and I Mori down there in ninth, struggled with that move low down. Jane Kim led the way for a while. Until Seyun and uh, Akio came out. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking Yanya because it's so often Yanya. So, winner of four out of five World Cups so far this season. Winner wow. of the season title, Cheon. So it seems she just came from nowhere. In her breakout season. In her she's breakout just season. turned or turning 16 this year. Her rookie year, as they would call it, uh, over in North America. And she has won again here in Xiamen. Four from five. It is absolutely incredible. She was second in the other one. <laughs> she never finished in a World Cup lower than second. Um, wow. We've spent the last three or four years being blown away by Yanya Garmbrecht. We still are, but we've now got Cheon. Can she do it next season? Oh. Yeah, it's it's actually exciting to see that there is challenge for Yanya out there. Yes, yeah. At times, it's felt like there isn't. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's been less exciting just to watch. I mean, Yanya is amazing, but just to watch her blow the field away um, is sometimes not as, not as interesting. Well, let's get down to Eddie and uh, Cheon. He's down the front of the wall. Let's see what Cheon's got to say. Cheon So, you've done it again. How does it feel in a debut season to have won again and again and again? I feel so great and it was really unbelievable and I want to show you great performance at Indai too. Well congratulations. We're coming up to the off season. You're not doing Toulouse. Will you be doing the Asian combined competition for the Continentals early next year? Yes, maybe I can join there. Excellent. And will you be on rock before then or just training? Uh, maybe I will go to Shirana, Spain, to do La Rambla. So, yes, that's my plan. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck. Hopefully see you there. Congratulations again. Oh, good question, oh. Eddie. I like how it was, a, I'm going to do La Rambla, not I'm going to try La Rambla. I know, I like it. I was like a, her. Good question from Eddie. When she said, oh, I'm off to see Arana to try La Rambla, we both looked at each other and went, Whoa. Good bit of juicy gossip there, good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get the results up for you uh, one more time. Of course, we will be bringing you the podiums as well. There you can see it uh, needed a podium and uh, needed a top to be on the podium in the women chairs. Uh, uh, took the top and uh, took the gold medal for the fourth time in five World Cups. Akio Noguchi and Jane Kim join it on the podium. Uh, Kyo's 61st World Cup medal. Too bad Jane Kim can't be too far behind either. And Yanya Gamra ends up fourth. Natsuki Tani and then uh, Luchka Rakovic. And that is uh, all from us in Shimo. And as I say, do stay with us. We will be uh, live streaming the podium. But that's all from Alana and I. And we will see you next weekend. We've got qualifiers in Insight on Saturday semis 
and finals live on Sunday. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.